Noth Fort, Weymouth, Dorset. Noth Fort is situated at the end of the Noth Peninsula in Weymouth. It was built as a coastal defence between 1860 and 1872 by a company of Royal Engineers to protect the harbour of Portland, which at that time was an important Royal Navy base. The fort is constructed on three levels. The lowest level, the magazine level, was originally designed to store gunpowder and shells. The middle level, the gun deck, was designed to accommodate 12 heavy muzzle-loaded cannons and provide accommodation for the soldiers manning the cannons. The top level formed the ramparts and provided a raised platform that can be used to fire muskets and light muzzle-loaded cannons during an attack on the fort. The fort played an important part in World War II when the base was used by both British and American forces. In 1938, alterations were made to the fort to allow it to be used as a central anti-aircraft ammunition depot for the southwest. Noth Fort did not see any action against an enemy until World War II when the main threat came from the air. However, in 1940, two ships failed to identify themselves and were fired on. They quickly turned on their lights to reveal themselves as refugees from the Channel Islands. During the Cold War period, the fort was used as a nuclear shelter for civil administration. Approximately a third of the magazine level was converted into command and accommodation areas protected by heavy blast doors. Coastal defence was abandoned in 1956 and as a result the fort was no longer required to protect the entrance to Portland Harbour. For the next few years the fort was used to house naval stores and equipment. By 1961 the Navy had no further need for the fort so it was sold to Weymouth and Malcolm Regis Borough Council. I visited this location in 2012 having signed up to attend an all-night investigation with a paranormal investigation group from Kent. I was unaware, at the time of booking, that a group of stag and hens had also signed up to attend the investigation which included a pre-investigation trip to a local pub. So by the time things got underway, the majority of the group were sailing three sheets to the wind, all apart from me, who was not amused. After enduring a few hours of swearing and screaming, two things that annoy me intensely, I took myself off to the hub, where teas and coffees were handed out. This was located in the cafe area of the fort. Thankfully, I was alone in this area, and while sitting in the darkness became aware of a young soldier, aged around 23 and from the late 1800s. I was aware that he communicated by whistling, and I wondered that as in life he would have been referred to as Whistler or a name similar to that. Looking around the darkness, I could see many spirit people, though nearly all stayed in the shadows. The distant sound of doors banging could only be put down to the rest of the group moving around the fort, although this wasn't verified. The most intriguing event happened in the nuclear bunker, an area of the fort which is completely sealed. I took a photo in the bunker which contained so many orbs they can't all be counted. These are not tiny insects or moisture as the room is completely sealed. This room has an unusual atmosphere. I wondered if if it was infrasound causing the feeling, as it is similar to that of the London Underground. However, I don't have any infrasound measuring equipment, so cannot be sure. For those who don't know, infrasound is sound waves that are below that of human audibility. I feel this location requires further investigation, although when I go next time, it won't be with a group of partygoers.